Okay, let's create a new project and a new job. When you first log into your TSC7 or your TSC5, this should be the screen that pops up if access has been installed correctly. If you are prompted for a username or password, that means that Trimble Access has not been set up properly in the virtual warehouse, and you're going to want to reach out to the virtual warehouse manager and be sure that Trimble Access has been associated with the serial number for the device that you are trying to install Trimble Access on. Briefly, we have our menu button here. The menu button will change slightly depending on which menu option or which settings you are working with. Over here, you'll notice a refresh. And on the data collector you're looking at, it's probably going to be a Dropbox. This is where we're going to log into our Trimble account in order to get access to Trimble Connect, which is a cloud-based service in order to help with project management, both in the office and in the field. And then to the right here, there are three buttons. This is where you'll be able to browse what's in the job and also be able to delete a job. That's one call that we seem to get is, hey, how do we delete the job? We know how to create the job, but how do we delete the job? And that's gonna be the three buttons here. Okay, so we want to create a new project, so we're going to hit the big yellow new button. We're going to create a new project, let's call it new project. We can add a description, a reference, a location. This is just going to make the total project package look a little bit better when we bring in the information into Trimble Business Center. It's not needed to create the project. And also an image. If you look down here, you're able to access the camera on the data collector and take a photo of the project site or the plan set or whatever the, the customer would like to set it up to take a photo. It just adds an icon to our new project uh, directory uh, where we first logged in. We're going to hit enter. We're going to say create. Going to be prompted again now since it's a, a new project has been created there are no new jobs in there so we're going to create a new job first things first let's give it the title we'll call it new job we'll go over creating a template in a future video the standard templates that come on the data collector are international scale only metric scale only u.s survey feet if we were setting up for a total station, we'd use U.S. survey feet scale only. For our cord system, we'd use a scale of one. Units would be U.S. survey feet, and we'll get into these here in a second. So let's set this up to run a GPS job. We're going to select the cord system, but let's go back real quick. You notice that we have a list of our different properties for the job here. In order to access those, we can click on the word here to the right, and that's gonna bring us here. We're gonna select from library, and it's gonna bring us into our coordinate system menu. We wanna be in United States Plane 1983. Our local datum and global reference for this particular system are going to be default. The zone, I'm working in Maryland, so let's do this for Maryland. We're going to hit M for Maryland to make it a little quicker. Maryland only has one zone, which makes it easy for us to select. So we're going to select Maryland 1900. Use the geoid model. If you've loaded a geoid model correctly into the data collector, you'll notice that there's a button here that we can say use a geoid model, yes or no. If you're not able to select yes or no, you haven't put the geoid model where it needs to go in the data collector, and that would be the geodetic folder under triple data on your data collector. Let's select a geoid model. The most common two geoid models that are going to be requested is geoid 18 and 12B. Let's use geoid 18. And then we need to add a project height. Project height is the max height that we're going to use on the project and that helps with coordinate geometry or kogo but this is a great spot to take a minute 
show off the help menu. The nice thing is Trimble's put a lot of work into their help menu over the years, and it's going to bring us right up here to a HTML format. And if you notice, we were working in the chord system menu. It's going to bring up help automatically for chord system, but we want to know what a project height is. So let's go ahead and put project height in search. And enter. First thing that pops up is project height. And it's going to bring us here and tell us what project height is. Give you a second to read this. And that's what project height is. All right, so we're going to go back into access. We've got our job set up. Let's say 100. Our max height here, Marilyn. Okay, let's see. Enter. Store. Okay. Units. Units we've already predetermined are going to be US survey feet. We can get really down into the nitty gritty here and set different parameters under our units properties. And this is gonna be personal preference or project specific, whatever the customer needs. I'm not gonna make any changes, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape. Layer manager. Layer manager allows us to bring in points files, map files, scan files, inspection files, filters, and features. Okay. This is where we're going to upload points from another job. We're going to bring in uh, map files, which could be a background map. It could be a DXF uh, or a CAD file for line work. It could also be a DTM, a digital terrain model. So we can do cut and fills to a digital terrain model, uh, things like of that nature. So we don't have any to upload for setting up our GNSS job. So we're just going to go ahead and hit escape since we didn't select anything. And we can access that particular layer manager menu uh, through the map screen when we actually create the job. And we can upload these things at a later date. Feature library. Feature library is going to be our code list or how we can use field to finish uh, and establish line work in the field to help make things a little bit smoother when we bring it into Trimble Business Center. I have a client that has their very own custom for doing inspections. Your collector more than likely is going to have a global features. The nice thing about global features, we'll go ahead and select that. Global features is going to be standard code lists that work well with Trimble Business Center that has previously been set up. You can shoot a point you can type in a letter for a particular code. Say we want to put edge of pavement in. We put E in and we can go through the list and we can find the actual code for edge of pavement that Trimble Business Center wants to use. And that can go through for, say, uh, D, if we're looking for a DT for deciduous tree or, you know, CT for coniferous tree, things of that nature. It's going to make things easier. If we don't select a list uh, or a library, it's just going to default to whatever we type in. So again, it's personal preference. Customer may have their own. Customer may want to build their own. And then in a future video, we'll show you how to work on the feature library. Kogo setting or coordinate geometry is going to be set to ground. Additional settings. Typically, we leave this off, but there are some things that we can add here. So if we wanted to use further descriptions. Most surveyors are going to be looking for point number, northing, easting, elevation, and code. And that's the standard, the standard that they like their text and their CV, CSV files to be put out in. By selecting use descriptions, we can add things further to the on code. And the example I like to use is for arborists or environmental scientists that have to identify trees. As I was talking about the global feature library, I mentioned DT for deciduous tree. So the code would be DT. The first description label could be the width of the tree or the diameter of the trunk. And then the further description could be the, and the label two could be the species. 
So if, if they want more descriptions, this allows them to do that. So go ahead and take a moment and work your way through and see if there's anything else that seems pertinent. Again, I don't usually use anything here. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can identify your different types of shots with different types of numbers and have things preset. Uh, so for, for me, it used to be uh, for control points, we'd use 100 to 199. For set control points, we would use 200 to 399. And you can set all that stuff up here if you notice. Okay, but we're not going to do anything for that today. Okay, media file. So media files is going to like we when we set up the new project, you notice that we could use the camera to take a photo. Now, how do we want to associate the photos that we're taking in the field, you have the option to take a photo of the control point that you're observing. And you can either tie it to the point that you've already shot. So you take the shot on the control point and then take the photo and that would be previous point. And then there's different options. Do you want to just tie the photos to the job itself? Do you want to take the photo and then take the shot? So that would be tied to next point, or you can associate it directly to a point name, or you can just do nothing with it and have it just stored arbitrarily. Another thing here is geotag. Military and DOD and certain agencies will want or not want to have their images geotagged, depending on the level of clearance or what their actual job security measures are. So in order to shut off the geotag, it's going to default to off. But in order to turn it on, you're going to have to go under media file to get to this geotag guy right here. So let's go ahead and shut that off. We'll hit escape. Abandon changes. Yeah, let's abandon the changes. We didn't want to do anything in there anyway. All right. So again, just like when we created the project, here's some more stuff that we can add that's not required, but we can add references. We can add description. We can add who's actually doing the job and any notes. But that is basically how we create a new project and how we create a new job to go in that project. So once we've got everything set the way we want it, we're going to go ahead and hit accept. And now we're ready to go to work.